All right, Ron Neese at head official here uh, at a grade school let, I don't know. I like state championship. Rules interpreter, let me double check what I am today. Oh, I'm yes, Ron Neese. <laughs> so uh, probably rules interpreter. I've done quite a bit of that just today, in fact. Nice. How how long have you been a part of this event and with the OAC? Well, I started with the OAC whenever it got formed, and I'm not sure the OAC was a formal organization 20 years ago because we started the junior high state, mm -hmm. and it was in Sandusky, and pretty much started by the Sandusky St. Mary's family, and it seems to me maybe the OAC came along within the year, and I think we were starting to use those initials and that organization name about the second year of the event, you know, when it was held at Jackson Junior High in downtown Sandusky. Cool. So, uh, but I've been with that since it started for 20 years, and uh, grade school, I've been with that probably since it started. I think I missed 15. one year when we used local officials down in the southeast in Athens. One year we had the grade school and the junior high in Athens at OU. Nice. So, uh, good. I've been looking for someone that... Uh, it's that's, old enough that's, to know the history. All right, go ahead don't and say twist it, it up. You know, not hurt my feelings. If I had feelings, that is. Uh, well, tell, tell me a little bit uh, how the events changed or evolved, or you know, what compare it to the the first few years that we have now. Because this is my first time in. Uh, oh my gosh, it's amazing! Just such a great setup oh, well, for uh, you. I just trust. brought a couple of the. I I found in my archives. Uh, a week or two ago, programs from the first two mm -hmm. junior high events. The first two held up at Sandusky and Ice. We didn't have that much room. We ran four mats. Well, the first year we ran four mats. The tournament started on Saturday at 10 o'clock. We had the semis probably around three. On same we had day, the huh? finals for it around seven, and that was the first junior high state tournament. The second year, we went a little big time. We still were running four mats at Jackson Junior High or whatever it's called in Sandusky. And, but we went big time and we started on Friday night. Get so out. we brought in you know, a few more competitors and probably went from maybe a 16-man bracket to maybe a 28 or something like that. So we went a day and a half and then it just kind of morphed and mushroomed from there. So from there we went down and had it at Marion for a few years in the Coliseum there. And we were utilizing, I believe, eight mats down there. And then one year we took it down to Athens and then we found the Cavelli Center and we've been happy. Yeah, it's great. So you've uh, seen, you know, but, lots of future NCAA oh, champions, it's, and it's, Olympians. It's very and, neat to see these kids that are just awesome grade school and, and those are hard to remember because when they're little they all tend to look alike and it's hard <laughs> to remember but uh, you know you, you pay a little bit more attention when you see these junior high mm -hmm. kids come back after and they're, they're immediately into high school oh yeah last year he was kicking butt you know as a seventh or an eighth grader in this program you know and uh, it's kind of neat to see him come up you know and, and go into high school and then of course, these high school studs are going on and, you know, carrying the load at the college level now. Yeah, so, not only is uh, the competition tough, but uh, what I like is when I go out, it feels like a high, like a college, high level, it looks like the NCAA championships. And there's car, the kids go through a tunnel. You know, what's gone into, um, what's gone into creating an event that's like that and uh, why to, to you guys and or to Jared and the OAC, is it you know, important got for so that? so much experience. You know, Jude being the head coach of Sandusky St. Mary's and running a great program over there, you know, state in the hunt, if not state champions for those seven or eight years, you know, and as you go and, and uh, wrestle at these high school events as a coach or a wrestler, you know, you see all these neat things that make the tournament mm -hmm. more exciting for not only the kids, but for the fans and the parents. And you start dragging these things in as we've done over the years to make it a better, better tournament. This event, 
to, I, I'd assume most of the people say, well, it's just like the high school tournament. I was just there a week or two ago. You know, we bring the things in and do a few little extra things, the smoke, giving the kids uh, their own singlet for the finals. Yeah, that's cool. You know, um, I, I think it's really a big thing for a kid. We didn't have things like this when I was in school. Yeah, you know? right. And I, I watch these as both the, uh, you know, an official who's officiated this event for a lot of years and now as a rules interpreter or whatever it is I am, uh, you can edit that part out. But I, I watch these kids and I think, geez, I'm not sure I was doing those things when I wrestled in college. You know, yeah. the kids are much more sophisticated. We, we are passing down the knowledge, you know, from this level to this one to this one and you see kids and, and you have to see you see kids out there doing things you think well wish my kid could do that as a senior in high school yeah you know? no I, I know exactly what you're kids, talking about you, know, you don't see it in every state you no know, but but you know Ohio a lot of people don't realize but we're kind of spoiled here in Ohio mm -hmm. Ohio and Pennsylvania I think probably are one two and I'm not sure if we're not number one but you know we, from the way we conduct our tournaments, I think the level of our officiating, but the, the wrestling of the kids. Uh, Ohio is a hotbed for schools, colleges to come and recruit our kids. And you see our state champions at schools all over the country, mm -hmm. especially the Midwest area. You know, people don't, th I, th I think they just don't realize Ohio, you know, the heart of it all. As uh, the slogan goes, well, I think for wrestling, that's very true. You can quote me on that one. You can quote me on that. You so so uh, your uh, role as head official, rules interpreter, whatever you want to call it, uh, yeah. what is important uh, for you and the crew of officials? Like, what do you guys talk about that is important in making sure your role is carried out in a way that, that you like and that adds to all the other things that make this event great? Well, I, I, you know, the, the two most important parts of a wrestling tournament, without a doubt, are the wrestlers and then the officials who have to, their job is to keep the playing uh, field level, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's important for officials in any sport to be consistent. You know, and the way we call out of bounds, the way we look at stalling, you know, everything. Because we have officials coming from all over the state here, and occasionally we've had an official or two from other states, maybe Michigan coming mm -hmm. in, although we predominantly utilize just Ohio officials. But, you know, you like to see the officials all calling things the same way, from stance to the way we look at stalling to, you know, everybody being aware of maybe some of the way the the more recent rulings of that, like out of bounds, mm -hmm. near fallen pins, you know, kind of following what college has been doing for a few years. You know, we want everybody to be on the same page and know exactly the way that should be called. So that's kind of one of the main things. I, I talk to the guys before we start each day and give them an idea of maybe some of the things that weren't very consistent because the kids and the coaches get confused. This guy called it like this, now this guy's doing like that. Like, mm -hmm. you, you know, what are you supposed to do? You know, and I think that's a little bit more of a problem we have in wrestling than other sports because in wrestling there's so much more uh, subjective officiating because, you know, we're in a body position control sport, yeah, whereas counts. basketball, Put it in the hoop, it yeah. Throw, you know, uh, first down, you know, block you. You know, there's just such a, a fantastic number of, well, you could say variables, an infinite so. number of, of variables as far as positions and situations. We can look at a Merkel or Peterson, but all of a sudden you got this kid with a, a little bit different look, and it's not quite the same. Does he still have control? And does he, you know, so many things can make it different. So, but having good officials and our guys work at it and you know yeah I don't know, the certainly the wrestlers. certainly a tough tough job I think and uh, man these guys are going what 10 to 12 hours today yeah. you know no other sport 
requires your officials to be marathon men out there. You think about what we're doing here, but it's the same way at high school. At the high school state here in Ohio, you know, Thursday we start at three, we finish at ten, and they're a little bit they're a little bit more grueling over there, and a lot more pressure because the whole world is watching here. Not that people aren't, but you know, and then Friday morning and the semis, but they're pretty grueling. But from a just an overall physical grueling standpoint here, look what we do. We start at well eight o'clock or eight thirty, and we're going to finish tonight about what seven ish. Got do the math. What do we got? 10 and 11 hours, and you know, they're on, they're off, they're on, you think, well, gee, they're sitting on their butt half of the time, but you think about it, you know, you get a little bit of break, you get right back out there, but it starts to, starts to wear on you. Yeah, you gotta be bit. sharp, like, yeah. that's a whole nother level of it, I think, is, it's not just that you have to be on your feet and move around, you have to, you, you have to be sharp. You always have to have your you, head in the match, yeah, you, if you start to daydream even a little bit or lose focus all of a sudden, well, who's in control, uh, you know, did I call, yeah. did I call a warning stalling or was that the last match I had? They tend to run together, unlike a duel, where, you know, they, the, the, I don't know, how do you want to say the drama builds from weight class to weight class, but it's just this school against another. But here it's red and green, the next match is green and red. Red and yeah. green. And you know, sometimes it, it's and hard. Soon you've done, you've done 50, 100 matches. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You do a lot of them and all of a sudden you have to put it together. But uh, officiating wrestling is, is definitely a challenge. I talk to a lot of the guys. Mark, do you do any other sport other than uh, wrestling? Wrestling only. Okay, but we have a number of guys out here that, especially football and wrestling seems to be the most common combination, but there are a number of guys out here that do three and four sports, and they'll all tell you to a T without a doubt, wrestling's the toughest one from a physical standpoint. Basketball, what do you do? Up and down, up and down. But in an hour, hour and a half, you're done. Mm -hmm. Do that for eight hours and nine and 10 and 11 hours. So the, this state event is, is a pretty grueling event for the guys, but... Uh, they do well. We, we, we and, keep after them. And how about adding on top of that some uh, pretty passionate fans slash parents slash coaches in, yes. you know, hour 10 of the day and some madman is upset because yeah, 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 it's a yeah, tough yeah, call or something. But that. So last that's week, part of it. most of the people in the chairs were up. We had a lot of high school coaches sitting in the chair or middle school coaches so they've been around wrestling mm -hmm. they have a better feel for and knowledge of the rules you know and although they want their kid to win and they're cheering him on and urging and yelling and screaming to get their <coughs> ideas across to their wrestler it's a little bit different when it's mom or dad out there so mm -hmm. we have more parents coaching their kids so there's more emotion and sometimes they don't see things clearly because their emotions tend to get in the way. And then another thing, a lot of them have never seen a rule book, let alone had time to come through and, yeah, and yeah. get a feel for the rules. So a lot of them have just a little bit of a knowledge and then they kind of feel that this is what the rule is supposed to be from a little bit of information they've gathered over the years and so and I talked to my refs that's a big thing I spend time on each morning and I will tomorrow morning you know talking about you cannot be a referee only you have to also be a little bit of a teacher and a little bit of a dad out there mm -hmm. you know sometimes with the kids you have to help them a little bit when things get a little bit of emotional but you know you have to be a teacher and a referee out there maybe a little bit of a coach a little bit of a dad you know I think to do a good job at this level yeah, I it's, saw it's, Tim Collins doing a good job of yes, that earlier. Tim does a, a really, he's very personable with the yeah, kids. I, and, I enjoyed and it. Especially if a kid needs that little extra pick me up when something didn't go his way. And obviously, somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose. But sometimes some kids need a little extra pat, you know, a good job, you know, out there. Or a kid maybe didn't win the match, but, you know, he put up a good fight. Nice. So, uh, one more question. What do you, you know, what are some things that you you like to talk to your that officials can do to become a better official to to reach their potential as a wrestling official? Oh, wow. Well, the the biggest thing number one, knowledge is power and knowing the rules and keeping your nose in the book. But different referees because we're worried about losing officials not just for sport of wrestling, but for sports in general, mm -hmm. there's going to be a shortage. There's a lot of old guys around like Ron Nisett, 
you know, a lot of the baby boomers, and we're getting to that point where I see more and more of them deciding this is the time, and they're getting out. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the young kids that I have coming in, I teach the class for new officials every year, and some of them, uh, officiating isn't what they thought it was going to be. Yeah. Uh, they don't like the confrontational aspect of it, but some of them, they're in it, they, well, I just wanted to do enough to maybe make a few extra dollars of spending cash. You know, it's, it's barely a hobby for them, you know. Mm -hmm. And so everybody's got their own reasons for being in the sport. So some guys really work at it to be the best they could be, maybe move up the ladder to, you know, be a st high school state tournament official. But some guys, everybody's got their own reason for how much they put into it. But knowledge is the most important thing. But, you know, a love of the sport and having fun out there. You know, I, they always say, Ron, you're getting pretty old, are you going to retire one of these? Well, you know, as long as I can move and get the job done out there, and as long as I'm having fun. You know, sometimes I look at some guys and they see they stuff and turn out there. I think, why? Aren't you Maybe it's you time know? to go. Yeah. yeah. So, And I always tell people, you know, one of the great things about it being an official, for not just wrestling, but any sport, but especially wrestling, you know, being a wrestling official, you got the best seat in the house. If you like wrestling, if you love wrestling, there is no better place to be than on the mat where you see it and you feel it and you feel the emotion of everybody. What a great thing when you have some big matches like, uh, wasn't there one just last week? Let's see, this Ohio State kid, this Penn State kid. Boom! Right? You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. No names mentioned on that one, but, uh, you know, you think about when well, you're out there, even just to watch it on television yeah. or something, but you see some of these big matches, maybe the underdog comes and, and, and you know, beats down a, the, the big dog from Russia or something. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know what I'm referring to. So, you know, it's, it's kind of neat. So, I don't know, we, we need to do something to get more guys in the sport and keep them there. Officiating is a tough thing to do. It's getting, unfortunately, politically correct to be negative out there. We have a president that's been pretty negative of the United States, I'm talking, so that's all I'm gonna say about politics. I think sometimes that kind of thing breathes upon itself, and, you know, sportsmanship is a very important part of not just wrestling, but any sport. Sometimes I really wonder about people browbeating their own kid out there. Mm -hmm. You know, a kid tries, but he doesn't win. And you see some negative things, but you're always going to see that with any sport. But I don't know. Uh, so where can, where can somebody go if they're interested in uh, throwing their hat in the ring, be a wrestling official? Is there a resource for them? Is there somewhere yeah, they can go to? Yes, the way it works for wrestling or any sport. All sports in Ohio now, and we've done this for exactly 15 years, all sports um, referee associations throughout the state must offer a class for new officials. And the class is roughly about 25 hours in duration. For most of them, it's usually around 21 hours of classroom instruction, learning the rules, how to get matches or games, uh, clothing, whatever it might be, but, but mainly rules in the conduction of a match or a game or whatever. And then usually there's four or five hours involved with actually on the job training, so to speak, working a biddy tournament or junior high tournament under supervision or a football game or whatever. So you need to get on the mat, on the field experience. So every association in Ohio and in wrestling, there are, I believe, 18 associations right now throughout the state in the northwest where I'm from. We have one in Bellevue, we have one in Toledo, we have one in Defiance, we have one in Lima, and we have one in uh, Mansfield. So the other parts of the state are set up similarly mm -hmm. as far as they have an association that has to sponsor a class for anyone that's interested. And you can go online and Google or go into the Ohio High School Athletic Association and just pull up referees, yes, do you want to become a referee and click and pull down and play the tricks on the computer and you can find the classes that are held in your area and the times that they're held. Wrestling, since we're picking on that sport, Joe, is usually in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, 
Central District teaches one in the spring. Fred Feeney, I believe, teaches one at Ohio State. And uh, we have that Russell for Autism event where you can actually get your license on all your time and that experience in one super weekend. Oh, cool. They do that. But most of the guys throughout the state of Ohio teach their officiating class for new officials in the fall, like starting, we'll say, in October, each 1st of October, and then November, and then December comes along, and then everybody has their time in, and they could become a certified official, even you, Joe, and there you could be go. ready and legally licensed to officiate December 1, the first day of next season. Awesome. Putting you on the spot here too. It's not only it's going to be just the old I'll guy. I'll go through. I go through the class. Yeah, it'll be it'll be kind of interesting. There I think. you go. But um, oh uh, well, I could tell that you love wrestling and you uh, have a passion for officiating, and so I really appreciate that. Um, it's a pretty important piece of the puzzle. Um, you brought up age a lot. I'll tell you some. Some people say age is an attitude. That's and, true. Uh, I, I believe and that. And you got too. a good one. Yep. Um, is there anything else that you want to share? No, we've talked about a lot of different things in a circle here, but you know, it's a great sport. You know, it's it's very unique unto it. So the only sport where the referee, after the event, somebody wins, somebody, and you get your hand raised. Ever think about that? No other sport does it. They don't do that at the end of a track meet. You know, do that in a football game where the referee raises up the hand of a lot of They do it. They do it in MMA. Huh? Do it in mixed martial arts, maybe. Well, is that a real sport? Is that, maybe, oh, maybe, but, snap! You know, looking at you know high school or college yeah, yeah. sports, no, it's yeah. kind of unique. But it's Scholastic a great sport. Sports. It's a great sport. I hope it continues for many years to come. Oh, when did that get started again? That was that 709 BC? I think the Greeks or somebody were. <laughs> it's been a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ron. Thanks a lot. Did you get more than enough? I hope. I what got what I this? need. I think people are gonna. People are going to get their fill of Ron. They're going to get a grin out of that. And, uh, and say, get that old guy back to the home. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, Ron.